Hello, this is Frederick from Tech Nordic. Uh, I'm coming back here tonight with an update video, and we're going to look at the RSA 5000 and 6000 in general, which is the bigger instruments, versus the USB 3.0 real time spectrum analyzers. And some of you already have noticed that there's been three updates. There's one RSA 306B now. I expect it to be delivered tomorrow. And there will be two new series based on the same USB 3. It's a 500 and a 600 series. Hopefully I will come back with information and some tests about those products shortly. But this video is really related to the bigger instrument versus the USB 3 and what's the difference. So I collected some questions when I've been traveling and I tried to go through them one by one. So let's start by showing you this. So here, here is one thing that you can see and I can go in here. We have the frequency. I can set these guys to max span. And the first thing you can see is the difference in the frequency coverage or frequency range. One goes from 1 hertz more or less up to 26.5 gig and the USB from 9 kilohertz to 6.2 gig. So that's the other thing. If I go for preset here, you can also see that the maximum modulation bandwidth for the RSA or the, the USB spectrum analysis is 40 megahertz. And the instruments here I'm using are an RSA 5126B. It's actually having 165 megahertz modulation band or demodulation band. Next, pe people ask me, I'm just going to put it at 3 gig because I have act you know, some, some antennas on here. So just want to show you how good it is at so 3 gig. The other thing that people ask me how good it is, you know, in the spurious free dynamic range and all. And one test I probably do is just to do an averaging like this and then uh, marker just add the marker I do the same thing here I just enable to raise 3 and I just add marker so without doing anything here we have 300k and 1 meg so we probably have to change this to a comparison to 4040 and now they should be comparable so this one is like 82 here and this is 70 here so it's a 10 dB difference more or less Let's tweak this down to see, you know, what is the lowest signal we can measure. So if we go, go down here to 10k, we can go down lower, but 10k seems to be something that some people use, 10k. And here we can read minus 82, and here is minus 95. And now if we want to measure the lowest signal we can do, we can tweak down the ref level here to minus 40 or something, but it you know it doesn't really matter in the end it's just moving it up so here we can measure now minus 105 or 107 and we will do the same thing with this one we put this at minus 50 now it's probably the same minus 104 and 105 but here is the difference in the setup you know there's the amplitude settings i can have an internal attenuator and i recommend people to go for zero here and now we're down to minus 115 which is 10 db still and then i boost in the preamp and now we're down to 125 db which is pretty good so that's the other difference is that they can go a little bit lower i have a little bit more control but now let's start with some fun stuff. You can see the difference. The next difference is actually how fast it is in DPX mode. So I will go with this one and do DPX. And you know this for sure. I will just change the center frequency to 2.4. 2.4 gig. And I will do the same here. If it wants, if it lets me. Yeah, it's a little bit slow. 2.4 I go with this one DPX here you are and um, there we are cancel 2.2.44 gig is actually where we want to go sorry for this 2.44 gig so if you run this is similar like this you've seen the settings 2.44 gig thank you very much you've seen the settings here and you know one of the reasons it looks like this is because of one thing it's that the RSA 306 is in my, it is in my desk and the 5000 is actually in the basement so the reception is not the same 
but if you look at it the lively feeling is probably you know this the same and we can go in here and we can tweak it a little bit so we set up the ref level a little bit you can also see that this doesn't look the same as this one so i will change this to 40 so you can get a little bit more feeling what i'm doing secondly i need to go in and tweak this you know bitmap scale and auto color and now you start to see this this is a little bit slow now it's recording at the same time so and then of course you can take this um, center pan and zoom and just move it around a little bit in the middle and you can do the same thing here center pan zoom so we have it in the middle the other thing you can do here is i close this down i'm sure you've seen this before close it like this and i close this one the other thing you've probably seen I'm going to just making sure that I have uh, set up the amplitude correctly. So we can have a preamp on. It looks a little bit better. So you can see some Bluetooth activities down in the basement too. So these are basically you know, the same thing. Some people say this looks much, much better. Of course it's much better. If you look at the, you know, here and look at the parameter readouts, my POI at the moment is really bad. You know, my PC is doing something I really don't know, but it should be like 100 microsecond. And this one, if you go to this one and I do the same thing, and preference, I show parameter readouts, is better than 8.3 microseconds. So it will, you know, each of the frames we get, you know, contains more information. So the thing that I sometimes do to do to get the you know, same feeling is go to the bitmap here and so put it like 10 times more like 10 seconds and this will be start resembling but still this you know this one has more you know pixels to work on the last thing you can do here which is also you know, really unique is all the trigger functionalities if you've been here to the trigger menu it's like the trigger is bandwidth is always 40 megahertz and you can just level trigger if you go to the trigger on this one you have RF input, you know, you have power, but you also have frequency mask, density, and run. And there is also time qualification. So there's a little bit more, you know, trigger capabilities. And the one I really do love, and I actually have access to this here in uh, density readout, this one, if somebody know, know, and it seems to be always off. So there's a box like this. Some people ask me what's used for what you know why do i want to measure how often a signal is there in time we used it for the bigger instrument there to actually trigger so i go in here and i put trigger on this i have the box similar to this and i put it here and i trigger but how do i know i trigger we go to view and we go to navigate the view and you can actually see here I put 100 mic microseconds, it's a little bit longer time. You can see I'm actually triggering this one. And I can move down here and trigger on, th th you know, the things walking around here, for example. And this is going to be, you know, very, very, you know, powerful together with the spectrogram, as the spectrogram only, you know, captures the thing that is triggered. So as soon as it's triggered, it will capture this. If I move this box a little bit wider, it will capture more of it randomly. But I can actually look at certain, you know, pikes of worst case, for example by putting this here on this side and every time I have something that is a little bit wider I will capture it so the capture is really really you know one of the good things about this that it's easy to capture uh, I hope you uh, li like this uh, short video and hope to see you again soon cheers bye